All right, I figured it was a good time to go on the record about PC gaming. You might remember like two months ago, uh, roundabout, I revealed my new PC. Uh, this this big boy right here. Ooh, excuse me. There he is. He's 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 a big chunky boy. I want to talk about. A lot of you guys have been asking me for the specs, so I want to talk about that. But also, I thought it was a good opportunity to also just you know do a deep dive on PC gaming. So this is gonna be like a little bit of a long rambly video. I mean what videos of mine aren't. But this is a fun conversation to be had about PC gaming, my history with it, and just, you know, talking about it is good because the PC community can seem very uh, scary at times. They can seem mean. Uh, PC building can seem complicated, but if I can get into it, so can you. And for transparency's sake, like I wanted to talk about some PC history and like my hardware, and I'm not trying to like flex, I just, think it's fun to talk about. And so you guys can kind of get to know what I'm working with and like what I've done in the past, you know, what I review some of my stuff on. So for me growing up, PCs were a luxury. It was something that I only, you know, got to experience at my uncle's house or like a cyber cafe uh, or the library, you know, playing RuneScape or something like that. Then eventually uh, stumbling into Doom, which I talked about uh, in another video recently, how that got me into things. And then, you know, becoming a tween or, or an early teenager, it was about getting a computer and downloading stuff and just d destroying that computer. <laughs> I think a lot of kids born in the 90s and then like in the 2000s when like maybe they had the privilege of their parents having a computer, but they didn't really know what they were doing with it. Uh, you would sneak away with that computer and download music and games and weird things illegally and, and just utterly riddle the computers with viruses. So that was a thing for me. And then eventually I started to get into like, you know, playing more games on them until ultimately, you know, I, I busted a compact Presario and it was time to learn about how to fix it. Thankfully, I had a cool uncle or really my best friend's uncle who knew how to build these things, knew what he was doing. He was like one of the only guys in town. So back then it was weird because to go and get PC parts, it was either you go to Comp USA, that was that was really it, or you go to like a trade show. And where I lived on Long Island, uh, there was a big park venue thing called Sports Plus. It was like a giant arcade indoor bowling alley. Like it was a bunch of stuff, but upstairs they had conference rooms and they would hold trade shows and they would often do like weekend PC part things. So it was almost like a big show floor, like flea market, but for PC parts. So that's how I got my first replacement PC parts and understood what it took to kind of cobble things together and, and get them working again. Also, I really miss old hardware box art, like, like old graphics card art, like, <laughs> They would they would go so bananas mode on just like the weirdest like fake rendered like lizard specimen spaceman guy or like sexy robot ladies. It was it was hilarious. This went on for a while, like well into the 2010s, I think. I think I got a Radeon card that had like a boot like Joanna Dark from Perfect Dark on it. That was fun. That computer lasted me for a little while, but then I fell off for a while until eventually I built a Radeon rig in like, you know, 2012, 2013. But from there, the rest is history. But like PC gaming is a very interesting thing, especially comparing that experience or even for some people out there, some of you are older, those experiences to how it is now. PC gaming is incredibly accessible. Uh, other than like the, the price a lot of the times, there is so much information out there. There are so many resources to figure out parts, to figure out how to build things. And it's just bigger than ever from the sense of like Steam. The Steam numbers, uh, PC gaming numbers are higher than they ever have been, higher than I ever thought really imaginable as a, as a younger person. And it's so weird now that like there are companies that just sell PC parts, like easy to use, accessible, like NZXT has cases that are like plug and play. Corsair is super mainstream. There are all these PC companies that just make it easy to buy and get gaming on a PC. I love and hate PCs. Building them is so much fun. I absolutely get so much satisfaction out of it. And I'll admit, I'm not the most technical savvy. You know, I can't always tell you exact wattage calculations or anything like that. But for me, it's always come down to just good consumer research and patience and some trial and error. So just to flex my street cred for a second, uh, before I got my newest PC, uh, this was my previous. This is a small form factor build, something I became obsessed with uh, when I lived in a very small place uh, with my wife and we basically had to share a desk. So space was so limited that I built this thing. This case is a Loke case or Luke case from Sweden. Uh, and this little guy, I managed to squeeze a 2080 Super in this. And yes, 
the temperatures are great. Everything ran perfectly fine with this thing. This thing is still a good machine. I'm gonna turn it into something else at some point, but building this thing for me was such a challenge, especially as a sloppy, unorganized cable management person. This thing pushed me to my limit and I challenged myself and I, I did it. And I, I, was, I was very happy with this. I actually had started with having a 980 Ti in this and then eventually I tweaked it and upgraded it to the 2080. Uh, and I was really happy with this for a long time. Uh, but for my newest PC, uh, I was actually kind of in a bind because I do all this game review stuff for work. I had some issues behind the scenes and I needed an absolutely massive capture beast for a couple of projects and I needed it quick and I didn't uh, have time to build one myself. And I never have gone with a company that does like pre-built things, but I did a bunch of research and I started working with Falcon Northwest who sent me this Falcon Northwest Talon custom to my specifications and uh, I'm really impressed like the whole experience top to bottom full disclosure They did just send me this uh, but the experience was really good and they're a PC building company from uh, they were founded in 1992 so they've been doing this for a long time like before this was cool and I love that but this is their standard anodized aluminum case uh, but what they did is they brought it to a machine shop and they machined it down to bare metal because I challenged them to make me something that looked like a DeLorean or Robocop like two of my favorite things besides all my other favorite things uh, and they nailed it this is great it is a fingerprint magnet like any uh, DeLorean owner or Cybertruck owner or refrigerator owner what will attest <laughs> you got to wipe this thing down a lot but uh, I've never had a PC this powerful before so the official specs are as follows it has an Nvidia GeForce RTX 4090 Founders Edition an Intel Core i7 14 700K, that's 5.6 gigahertz at 20 cores, a Seasonic Vertex 1200 watt power supply, 64 gigs of Kingston Fury Beast uh, DDR5 RAM, and all of this is sitting in an ASUS ROG Strix Z790F gaming ATX motherboard. Storage-wise, it has four terabytes of M2 Kingston Fury Renegade. I also got two SSDs like SATA, uh, Samsung specifically, because I, I pull things out of the machine a lot. I pull drives out and bring them other places. Uh, uh, swapping gameplay footage around a lot. I needed something like that. So basically I needed a big capture beast for the highest quality gameplay and some flexibility with the memory within it. And when I posted on uh, social media, like everybody was like, yeah, but the airflow is bad. It's not. Uh, the temperatures are actually a little below normal. Like I was, I was born in the darkness. I was molded by small form factors. So I, I monitor temperatures like crazy. So now for transparency's sake, you know when I'm capturing footage on PC, I am rolling with like a 4090, so basically I can usually crank everything up to ultra, which is uh, an immense privilege. <laughs> this is not a flex. I understand how fortunate I am with this, but it is a really nice experience. Although it's not always just a perfect, you know, throw the best hardware at something and it'll run perfectly. It always comes down to game optimization. You've probably heard it in the news, not every PC port is perfect. And that is the case even when you have like a freaking insane RTX 4090. Uh, and lately what I've been playing on this, uh, <laughs> you know, it's like you have the highest end hardware to play like regular old stuff. So I've been playing, I always play Civ. I always have Civ installed on all my machines. When I have time, I am a Civ addict. Uh, also PAL World. Uh, I played a lot of Power World on this when this released. Also, uh, I always have installed Thug Pro. Uh, it's like a fan mod compilation, kind of like Tony Hawk Underground, but like there, there's more to it and it's accessible on PC. Also, uh, Metal Gear Solid specifically. So there's like a bunch of versions aside from just like on Duck Station. There's a GOG version. There's Metal Gear Solid Integral. There's kind of like a fan mod that takes the best of all of it. I have kind of that with all the tweaks installed on this. So it looks way better uh, than the Konami re-release of Metal Gear Solid. So I always fire that up. Uh, and when I first got this machine, the first thing I played was Avatar Frontiers of Pandora. I've talked about that a little bit in other videos. The game doesn't run too well on console, but on PC, this thing looked insane. Like, obviously that goes without saying, but like they really nailed the detail of Pandora. And the other thing, the other flex was uh, firing up the musical scene from Alan Wake 2. I don't want to show too much of it because I want people to experience it for its, experience it for themselves. But that scene with all the flashing light, the reflective floors, everything cranked up to 11, downright shocking. It just made like an awesome scene even crazier. And with all that being said, uh, if you were wondering how I play, I still tend to like to sit on a couch and play games on a TV. So here in my office, I have this PC wired with a cable running over the ceiling uh, to a 
TV I have in the corner over here, and I usually play over there. Keyboard and mouse setup I only like for very specific things. Uh, I don't force it unless I have to, but like I'll always play Doom or like a crazy first person shooter or something like that in first person when it's something I really like. But otherwise, I just kick back, man. I got no one to impress these days. And speaking of that, uh, in terms of monitor, mouse, keyboard, it's all just like stuff I have, stuff that somebody gave me, a friend gave me, a freebie that was like with a bundle. I don't have anything impressive in front of me right now. I am working uh, with a company specifically around monitor stuff that I might talk about in another video soon. Uh, but really for me, it's always just about the thing, nothing else. It's like this with just a keyboard and mouse plugged into it, whatever, or this with a controller plugged into it, and I'm good to go. I'm easy. I don't have these crazy impressive setups like some of you guys are on like r slash battle stations. So I've been loving this, and it was hard for me as somebody who went pre-built, but I still suggest to a lot of you guys to uh, try and build your own PC at some point. So many people have messaged me over the years like being like, how do I get into PC game? Blah, 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 blah. Uh, so you have to be conscious of prices, wait for sales, keep track of everything, figure out the parts you need, use something like PC Part Picker. It's an incredible resource or Tom's Guide. So many places uh, basically spell most of it out for you, right? But then keep track of those parts and constantly check the prices because they will fluctuate. So that's how you can probably get the most bang for your buck. And then when it comes to actually building it, all I can say is you don't have to be a super genius. You just have to be well-researched on the parts you bought, how to install them, how exactly they will fit, try to know as much of that ahead of time, and be patient, go slow. If you can't finish it in one sitting, don't, it's fine. With certain things like the small single pin connectors, hold your breath as you do it, kind of like a, like a sniping in a game. You're like, <gasps> some of those are really hard. Uh, get the right tools, like a little iFixit toolkit you can get on Amazon or something like that. And when you turn it on for the first time, that is the most euphoric thing you will ever feel. It is such a rush, but if you turn it on and there's an issue or you press power and it doesn't turn on, take a deep breath, step away from it for a little while and then come back and start from the beginning or, or work your way backwards. It's kind of like a hard video game. You know, for me, if I can't beat something in a game, I turn it off, I walk away, I come back. And start small. If you gotta build a smaller thing that like doesn't have the craziest specs, but you get something, you get in the PC ecosystem that you wanna be in, uh, or you learn a little bit, that's the win. Don't be afraid of like super toxic, like PC master race, like crazy people. Uh, don't be afraid of like some of the tech spec stuff. Again, if I can do it, you can do it. And as a plug, again, Falcon Northwest, if, if you're willing to pay for like the best of the best, uh, they really do show up and <laughs> they, are, they are really good. So big thanks to them for this, but also just like the, uh, just have you guys give, letting me talk about PC gaming for a while. Uh, I haven't really ever talked about my history with it. Uh, I've done Radeon builds. I had like a weird jacked up Radeon build. I had a build in like the Corsair kind of like lunchbox or like cooler style PC. Uh, I've been around a lot. So really, this is a conversation. I definitely want to know what you guys think in the comments about PCs, what your experience is. Uh, they are incredibly frustrating. I hate Windows. That I should have talked about that earlier. I love PCs. I hate Windows with a burning passion. I will avoid it at all costs. And anything that usually goes wrong with a PC isn't the hardware. It's just how much Windows sucks. Some PC fans don't even want to hear that. But you know what? I don't care. <laughs> So let's talk about anything PC gaming down in the comments, your experience, your perspective. Uh, and honestly, for me, uh, if you have like a monitor recommendation, I tend to like LG, but like keyboard and mouse stuff, hit me up, man, I appreciate it. But let's talk anything PC gaming down in the comments. If you wanna check out Falcon Northwest, that will be linked in the description down below. But thank you guys for being here. I'm Jake Baldino, subscribe because video games, pizza's on me.